Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel Network Engineer Pro. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my CCIE success story. A few people have asked me for that and I've been meaning to do a video on it, so here it is. CCIE stands for the Cisco Certified Internetworking Expert. It's Cisco's highest technical certification and is accepted worldwide as the most prestigious networking certification in the industry. It is a very difficult exam. I'm gonna share with you briefly how I got into the networking career field and then how I approach studying for and earning my CCIE. But before that, if you haven't already, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more networking content. So I started my networking career in 2006 at the age of 18 by joining the United States Army. My MOS was a 25 November, that's a nodal network systems operator, which is just a fancy way to say network admin or network engineer. I did routing and switching. I worked with various line of sight and beyond line of sight and satellite communication systems. I deployed to Iraq a few times supporting networks out there. I fully left the service in 2013 and at that point I had already gotten my CCNA and I would say like six months after that, I started my journey to the CCMP and I started working as a network engineer for a large enterprise. Now, at that time, I've heard of a CCIE certification, but I didn't know a ton about it. But I've always been interested in the higher level operation of networking protocols. So reading RFCs, looking at Wireshark capture and things like that. I always enjoyed the really nerdy part of it. Over the years, I read more and more. I watch more videos and the people teaching the stuff are mostly CCIEs. I mean, very well respected people like Brian McGann, Narbic, Kevin Wallace, Keith Barker, and more. I wanna understand networking at that level or at least a percentage of it. So I made the decision mentally to go for it and pursue the CCIE routing and switching certification which at the time was the Route Switch version 5. A coworker of mine who was a CCMP like me and one of the sharpest engineers I've ever worked with, I was like, hey man, at some point, we have to renew our CCMPs. You wanna just take the CCIE written, which renews our CCMPs anyway, and go for the CCIE lab? He was like, yeah, man, I'm down for that. So he was down, I was down, and our journey started. So I'm studying for the written exam, and there's a lot of stuff to learn. I mean, not just in-depth detail of protocols that I already work with, but a lot of stuff and topics that I never touch. Things like MPLS, L3 VPN, and quality of service. So I study for a while, I take the written, and I fail it. I eventually pass it summer of 2018. Now it's time to start my lab studies. Something I wanna mention is that for the routing and switching version five exam, once you pass that written exam, you have 18 months to do your first attempt. Then after your first attempt, if you fail, you have 12 more months to pass. That may or may not be the case for the CCIE Enterprise lab exam, I haven't checked recently. Someone I know who's a double CCIE gave me some advice. He said, listen man, don't rush it. Don't study for the lab for six months, think you're ready and then go take the exam. If you can afford to study for a year or more, before your first attempt, do it. So I'm not in a rush to do this. I'm not going for the CCIE because I wanna leave my job for a better one or because I'm expecting a promotion or a raise. I mean, don't get me wrong, those things are very nice, but I'm doing this because I wanna be a CCIE. It's a personal goal. Knowing that I have 18 months to take my first attempt, my plan is to study for 18 months. I wanna take the most amount of time to study so that if I fail, I have 12 more months to pass. So I'm labbing every day. I had an INE subscription, so I was going through all the topics, all the videos. I was doing the advanced technologies labs, going through foundation labs, mock labs, full scale labs, troubleshooting labs, making my own labs. On Saturdays and Sundays, I would lab all day. On the work days throughout the week, I'd wake up at 4 a.m., get to the office at five, study till 8.30 or nine, work, study during lunch, work, get home at five or 6 p.m., and then study till 10 or 11 p.m every day for almost a year and a half. Now let's fast forward the time frame to fall 2019. It's been over a year since I passed the written and I'm towards the tail end of my CCIE studies, or at least I think I am. I'm at the point where I need to start thinking about a test date. On the lab scheduler, the dates were pretty scarce. I think everybody was panic booking because the exam was about to change in February 2020, which I totally get. That new exam has a whole lot of new things that I've never seen before, like SD-WAN, SDA, and to learn those things are gonna set any candidate back months and months. Before I pick my date, I wanna look at CCIE boot camps. Whether or not my work pays for it, I don't care. I'm gonna put it on a credit card and I'm gonna take a week of PTO to attend one. Boot camps are extremely helpful. I wanna be as fully prepared as possible. INE was my first choice for boot camps. I used them so much to study that it made sense to attend one from them. 
But the thing is that they stopped doing in-person boot camps and they only did them online and they cost almost $6,000. I didn't want to pay that much and go to an online only boot camp. I have family at home, it's loud, my power, my internet could crap out. There's too many distractions. For me, I wanna be in a room with other candidates going through the same stuff as me with a top-notch instructor. So I found Narvik from MicronicsTraining.com. He does CCI boot camps on site. He's a beast. He writes Cisco Press books. He's very well respected and people love his boot camps. He had one in Orlando at the end of November, which is a week long, and that's only a three hour drive for me. I was like, that is the one I'm going to. So I book it on a credit card and then I schedule my lab exam for December 12th. So that's three weeks after the boot camp. So the boot camp ends, three weeks later is my test day. His boot camp was amazing. He went into great detail on everything and there was no PowerPoint. Everything was whiteboarded. It was super hands-on. Some of the labs that we did were from Cisco, but others were made by him. He taught some really cool techniques geared for the lab exam, taught us some cool 007 ninja configs and more. Attending his bootcamp was 110% worth it. I learned a lot and it boosted my confidence, so Narvik sir, thank you. Okay, so December comes around. My test day is Thursday, December 12th. I fly into Texas the day before. Do not fly the same day as your exam. You're going to be tired because you woke up really early and you risk being late. It is about a 15 minute walk from my hotel to the Cisco building. Nighttime comes around and I did spend most of the night tossing and turning. Not a lot of sleep. I woke up early, ate hotel breakfast, and I head over to the Cisco building. I get there about 20 minutes prior and I'm just so nervous. I walk into the reception and I know I'm in the right place because there's like 15 other really nervous looking people. They ask you to pick something from a lunch menu, then the proctor comes in and says CCIE candidates follow me. He takes us to the testing room and tells us where to sit. I'm all the way in the back by the bookshelf. And there's stickers on the monitors that they all say like RS, SP, security, DC, which I'm assuming are for the different tracks. And the majority of the seats there were all for RS for routing and switching. Based on where people were sitting, I think two guys were doing security and one was doing service provider. So the test begins. The first section is T-shoot or troubleshooting. I start the lab and it's freaking gigantic. I'm going through the tickets. The first few I was able to get, but there were some really tough ones that took a lot more time than I expected. The game plan going in was 10 minutes max per ticket. If I have to spend more than 10 minutes on a ticket, depending on where I'm at, I'm just gonna move to the next one. There was one for sure I wasn't able to get, so I winged it. I think I broke a restriction in fixing that ticket. I then finished that section feeling confident that I got over half of my tickets correct. Next is the diagnostic section. Now I have no idea why diagnostic was part of the lab because it was more like a written exam anyway. I had a few questions only and 30 minutes to answer them all. This section was pretty stressful because of the time limit. There's a lot of material to read for each question and it takes a lot of time. So I'm sitting there and I'm reading and I'm rereading to make sure that I don't miss anything. I look at the clock and I have five minutes left and I haven't even started the last question. So I speed through it, use my gut, pick the answer that I think is best. And next is the configuration section. I started the configuration section and again, my jaw dropped. The topology was so large, so many devices. It's crazy. So expect that lab to be intimidating. I'm typing away. 45 minutes after config started, the proxer stops us for lunch. We go into the room next door and we eat. And to be honest, the food was actually pretty good. I was surprised. After that, we return to our seats and continue the exam. Now, as soon as we resume, a guy gets up and he says, good luck everyone, and he walks out of there. There's no way he's finished. What I think happened is that maybe he didn't do well in T-shoot or Diag and it got to him mentally. He's thinking, well, if I'm not gonna pass, then why even continue? If you don't think that you did well in the previous section, try to keep focus and continue, right? Learn what they're asking at house so that you can return and get the pass that you know you deserve. There was a lot of stuff to configure. I was there until the end of the day. The proctor says, hey, we got 30 minutes left, guys. At that point, I start doing my verifications. I'm running TCL scripts to verify IP reachability throughout the topology. Things are looking good. I finished the test. I left the building knowing that I gave it my all. The test was very difficult, but I felt I did good in layer two and layer three. I completed most of those requirements. I did get tripped up in IP services. I know I lost some points there, but it didn't seem to affect the overall reachability in my exam. Overall, I felt I did better in config than I did in troubleshooting, but Diag had me worried and thinking about new test dates. I try not to worry, but to be honest, it's hard not to. I actually started on call for my job the very next day. So as soon as I finished my test, I took an Uber to the airport and I flew home late that night. I woke up the next day, checked my email, no email. Went to work and in the middle of a meeting, I got the email that my test results were ready. 
I went outside to check it and I think I walked around in circles for like 10 minutes debating if I wanna even open the email at all to see the results. I was actually afraid to see. To be honest, I wanted someone else to open it, right? So that was a Friday and I'm thinking, why don't I just open it on Monday and spend Saturday and Sunday relaxing? Nope, I put way too much effort into this to wait. So I'm gonna open it right now. I log in, hold my breath and I look at the results and I see a green check mark with a CCIE number 64356. It took me a few seconds to realize what I was reading, but I passed. I couldn't believe it. I was in total shock. I had so many emotions going through my body. My hands were shaking. I was sweating, I, but I immediately felt a relief. A huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. It's incredible that something you prepared for for so long, I mean, literally almost 18 months, and it made so many sacrifices, spent so much money, and I did it. For two weeks straight, I couldn't believe it. It felt like I was in a dream. So now that you heard my story, let's talk about some tips for success that helped me. Tip number one, when committing to the CCIE exam, you need support from your family and your coworkers. The amount of hours that you need to dedicate to study for this exam is not easy. I never left my house. I didn't party. I didn't do anything but study for a year and a half. Now, my wife was a nursing student, so she spent a lot of her time studying too. So being locked away in my room for hours almost every day wasn't a big deal for me, but that may not be the case for you. Now, the CCIE is not something that you study for two hours a week. It's hours and hours reading, labbing, watching videos, labbing, reading RFCs, labbing Wireshark, labbing, 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 labbing. I tried to go to the gym, but I'd be doing bench press and I would finish my set. And instead of getting ready for the next set, I'd be thinking, how do I fix RPF failures using multicast BGP? I couldn't focus on working out because all I would think about was the lab. Tip number two, let your work know about your goals. They should support you. You know, after I passed my exam, the company I work for reimbursed my lab exam fee and the boot camp because I let my supervisor and my coworkers know about my goals and the company I work for supported me. Tip number three, if you're gonna attend a boot camp, which I highly recommend, do it towards the end of your studies as close to your lab day as possible. Attend a boot camp after you've gone through all the topics multiple times. CCIE boot camps are not where you go to learn OSPF v3 for the first time. You should know that well already. Boot camps are there to fill in like any missing gaps ask questions, see different ways of doing things, which all help knowledge and boost confidence before you step into that lab exam. Tip number four, now this might not apply to everyone, but see if you can get a study partner. Convince a motivated coworker to take that journey with you, someone to study with, someone to lab together, figure out why protocols aren't working and things like that. I was able to do that with a coworker on my team and he did pass his lab exam a few months after me. If you don't have a coworker willing to take that sacrifice with you, maybe you're part of an online study group and you can get someone from there to study with you. Tip number five, how to study for the CCIE lab. Get an INE subscription. In my opinion, right now this is just my opinion, they are the best for CCIE training. They will tell you how to build a lab with virtualization. They're gonna go through all the topics with videos and things like that. For the CCIE enterprise, I think that SD-WAN can be completely virtualized, but not everything in SDA as of right now. So that's something you might wanna be aware of. You might have to purchase rag space until that controller can be virtualized. Maybe that's changed, I haven't looked recently. You will spend most of your time configuring the CLI and looking at debugs. The more you lab, the faster you're gonna get. You're gonna wanna build that repetition and muscle memory so that you can quickly configure those protocols. Now, it is easy to build a dedicated lab that you can virtualize the majority of the topics. A used Dell server costs five or 600 bucks. I have a playlist dedicated to just that, building an ES6i server for network engineers. I'm gonna include that in the description, so be sure to check that out. It's not just labbing and watching videos. There's a lot of reading that's required. That includes Cisco press books, RFCs, Cisco white papers, configuration guides, and other people's online blogs and more. Tip number six, the most important tip, do not give up. It is not an easy test. There will be times during your journey that when you're labbing, stuff's just not gonna work. It's not gonna make sense. Pings don't work, adjacencies don't come up, and you're gonna be like, man, forget this. Why am I torturing myself? I wanna go out and have fun, right? You're gonna be busy with work. Weekend cutovers are gonna take up your study time. That's gonna happen, I promise you. It's gonna happen more than once where you're gonna wanna quit. Trust me, I've been there. When that does happen, go and take a break. Go for a day or two, go do something fun and reset. It's all gonna be worth it in the end. Even in the lab exam, something might not go your way and you're questioning why even continue. If I'm not gonna pass, I should just quit, right? I mean, I saw a guy do that in my lab exam. But no, don't quit, 
don't give up. Nothing in life worth having is easy to get. The last tip is that throughout the exam, gather the interfaces that all have IP addresses and put them into Notepad. Prep a TCL script so that you can quickly test reachability at the end. That is gonna save you tremendous time. It did for me. I also did a lot of debugs during my exam, specifically debug IP routing. If I'm configuring routing protocols, the adjacencies are gonna come up and there's gonna be some debug output, right? When those adjacencies come up, then overall it should be quiet. As you configure new routers, they're gonna get updates and you're gonna see a little bit more output. But if you're constantly seeing withdrawing route, adding route, withdrawing route, adding route, then something's probably broken and you need to go troubleshoot. So TCL scripts and debugs helped me. Now that's all the tips that I can think of for right now, at least the major ones for me. Remember guys, CCIE is a journey. It is a long and expensive journey, but I wouldn't have it any other way. You're gonna learn so much at such a high level that even if I never passed, that journey to me would still be 110% worth it. Being a CCIE doesn't mean that you know everything. I never have and I never will, right? I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you. Guess what? I forget things just like you. When I forget things, I'll read the configuration guide for it, lab it out a few times, and I should be good to go. I'm always a student, always learning. My goals now are to maintain my CCIE status, keep that up to date, and then help as many people as I can get into and learn networking. If you're thinking about going for the CCIE, go for it, pursue that journey. Even CCNA and CCMP, do it. It positively changed my life and I know for a fact it's gonna do the same for you. So believe in yourself and don't fear failure. And that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you found it helpful. If you think that this video is gonna help other people, hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Right? Doing that lets the YouTube algorithm know to put this video in front of more faces. I really appreciate it. Now, that's gonna be it for now. Thanks everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.